This is the day that we will be hiking Half Dome, which is something we've been trying to do for the past couple years. We won the lottery, not the annual lottery, but the two day out lottery after trying two times in a row. It's 5.17 in the morning, just parked at the trailhead. Here we go. Okay, I can take this off now. It is incredibly smoky this morning. A little bit eerie, the smell. There are a couple small fires in the park right now. Not sure if that's what we're smelling or if it's something farther away, but the sun is coming up now. We hiked Half Dome via the Mist Trail, and there were signs right away reminding you to have your Half Dome permit that can either be a printed copy or an electronic copy. You ready for this? Let's do it. 8.2 up, 8.2 down. I came in with sore calves. Same. The steep incline is already a little rough. Not even a mile in. So apparently there are bathrooms on the trail, at least one, about a mile in. What do you know? Vernal Falls and the sound that it makes when it hits the rocks is really interesting. Water levels were really low when we were here in mid-August, but normally the spray from the waterfall reaches the trail and that's why it's called the Mist Trail. The sound of the water hitting the rocks sounds like a jet flying, if that makes any sense. It's like a cracking sound almost. I thought we were nearing the end of the stairs and then we came up and turned and there's this skinny little row of stairs. It's never ending. I got vertigo looking over the edge. Just beyond the top of the waterfall, there's another bathroom and multiple signs reminding people to stay out of the water. Basically, no fun signs. Or like, you know, don't die signs. I think this is the first time that we've had like any stretch of moderate trail and we've gone close to three miles now. It's been pretty much uphill the entire way, steep uphill. <laughs> and for some reason, I'm getting like attacked by little flies and gnats and Cole says he hasn't seen one. They're like all over my face. There's one swarming the camera right now that I can see and it looks like, oh, The bugs are annoying. They haven't bugged me at all. They're everywhere. After some more steep stairs, we reached Nevada Fall, and then surprise, more stairs after that. We made it to the junction of the John Muir Trail and the Mist Trail. We took the Mist Trail. And we have four and a half miles to go. I 
when we were going up the stairs, I said to Cole, do you think there's any easy part of this trail? And we both said no, but there is. We've been on it for a while now. It's just been really gradual or flat. Um, it's like s sand basically that you're walking on. Hi, little friend. He's cute. Enjoy your rock. Stopped for a little snackaroo. Feel refreshed. Just need a little pick me up. Um, we got a ways to go. This stretch featured a series of switchbacks and of course, more stairs. This is also when it started to get pretty warm outside, so we needed to stop for breaks more often. Eventually, we got a glimpse of Half Dome and the cables through the trees here. We just gotta get there. We're pretty miserable right now. Oh. Talk to me. Tired. So this is where they check permits. We decided to stop and have lunch before we go up because there's no shade up there. I'm assuming it's probably pretty windy at the top. So this just seemed like a better option. They check to make sure you have a permit and then um, give you a little spiel about continuing on. Once they check your permit, you still have a ways to go before you reach the cables. First, you need to get through more stairs and steep switchbacks with almost no shade. I feel like no one talks about this part. Nope. It looks like it keeps going for a while. Here we are talking about this part. This part's brutal. We'll pick up some gardening gloves for us to use. Ready? Let's do it. Yeah. It looks a lot more daunting from far away than it looks up close. Like, you don't think so? <laughs> I thought from back there it looked really scary, but up close it's like not as straight up. Right. I would agree with that. Good gloves. Think so? So far, so good. <laughs> I do. I'm done. Something we learned there does not appear to be a set right of way on the cables for people going up or down. You just kind of have to communicate with people as you pass them about whether they want you to come up first or they want to come down first. And you might have to move to the side for people who are moving a little faster than you. Somebody coming? Hiya. Hello. Can we pass you? Are Absolutely. You Great. Here we come. All right, that's the last plank. And then there's one plank a little bit further down, so we're going to walk back on the rock. Do you want to come down? You okay right there? Yep. So this is where I started struggling. Ready? I think so. Okay. Not necessarily from the upper body workout, but the heat. You can come on down. You sure? Yeah, I need okay, all the breaks need a I break. can get. All right, yep, yep, don't be afraid. How can you have Colorado socks on the Kansas City hat? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's hard to hear, but I told Cole that I couldn't get my heart rate to go down. Now, I listened to my body and started taking longer breaks, which you can see, even though we were almost to the top, we could see the end. This is just not the place that I felt comfortable pushing my limits. I took it one step at a time, told myself just make it to the next plank and then rest, and eventually we made it. 
Woo! <laughs> ah. There is a killer. Here's the thing. I really struggle in the heat. You crushed it. The cables were the easiest part. Of this hike? For me. It was the worst part for me. Really? Just because I'm so hot and I couldn't get my heart rate to go down. Like, yeah. even just standing there not moving because it's so hot. And even just doing like any activity in the heat, I really have a hard time. One thing I noticed is the rock isn't nearly as slick as I was expecting. Oh, it's super porous. It's like a rough rock, so you're able to have pretty good traction. It's not like slick rock in Utah where you're just sliding around the whole time. I, mean, I felt like I had good footing the whole time. A much better vibe up here than the rest of the trail. Everybody's just relaxed, everybody's in a good mood, it's beautiful, and it's just 360 views. Um, bad news though, Cole's out of water. Three liters is what I told him. He didn't pack three liters. There are places to get water on the way down, but it's several miles from where we are right now, so it's gonna be a bit. I have water, so obviously he can have some of mine, but she doesn't like to share. Also, more bad news. Now we have to go down, which is not going to be great. I like seeing where I'm going, but I know when it gets super steep, I'll probably go backwards. Coming down from the cables, I felt was much easier than going up. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. Man alive, those gloves come in handy. Don't forget gloves. Now we have like eight miles to go down. Yeah. Okay, we did not document our half dome descent because it was pretty ugly. It's the next day now, so we've had some time to reflect on everything. I'll start just with a brief synopsis of what happened on the way down. Uh, we ran out of water. We knew that the next water station was just a few miles away. I thought, great, that'll be fantastic. But Cole took a turn before we got to um, the river where we could refill our water. A bad turn. and just started crashing and then even once we got more water it didn't help because at that point he was already dehydrated and we took the mist trail back down which is the same one that we took up and it's very steep so going down when you're already fatigued and dehydrated in his case was difficult it's hard on the knees it's hard just on the body in general but we did it we finished it it took us 11 hours 36 minutes i want to close out this video by giving just our take on the hike and what we would have done differently loved the hike loved the views it was incredibly tough very difficult the cables are very unique that's a very i mean that's an experience that i've wanted to do for a long time so so you're glad we did it yeah, 100%. I would agree with that just in terms of how I felt about it. Um, the top is incredible. Can't really compare it to any other day hike that we've ever done. I know some people talk about Angel's Landing. We've done Angel's Landing. This was, I feel, much more of an event than Angel's Landing. Absolutely worth it. Very long, though. It is a long day hike. 16 miles is a lot to cover in a single day, especially if you're starting at 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning. Things that we would do differently if we ever did this hike again. I, or would you ever do it again? Not in a day. 
So I think that's the biggest thing. If I ever did it again, I would either break it up into two days, which you can do. You can hike, there's a backpacker camp that you can hike to and camp there for the night and then you wake up super early, go do the cables and come back down. So either that or start at like midnight the night before. Just not, the heat was killer. The worst part for me was the heat, which I talked about in the video. I know that about myself. If the heat doesn't bug you, then I guess whatever, but it was really tough for me. No shade. No shade. So I would just do it at a different different time of day. And obviously the biggest thing that I would do differently is pack more water. I read the night before that you should plan three to four liters of water. I disagree. Yeah. I don't think that's enough. I think four liters is like minimum, minimum. minimum. And be well hydrated before you start to hike. Hydrate for 48, 72 hours before. If you've ever ran a race before, you know you're supposed to do that as well. It's a similar concept. Make sure you're well hydrated and pack way more water than you think you need and have a backup plan if you run out of water. We used somebody's filter who happened to be on the trail. We didn't have our own filter, but there were plenty of other people who did. So bring a filter, bring water treatment, just have a way to get water. That was a big mistake on our part. I've never felt that dehydrated in my life. Like struggling the last few miles. But 10 out of 10 would recommend if you're lucky enough to get a permit. I totally understand now why they limit it the way that they do. It's a pain. We applied multiple times before we were able to do this hike, but I get it. They cannot let thousands of people up there, a couple hundred a day on those cables. That's enough. So if you get the chance to do Half Dome, absolutely do, do it. it make sure you're prepared do your research beforehand don't be like me back enough water thanks so much for watching this video you guys uh i hope you enjoyed it it was a little bit of an experience but it was fun so we'll see you in the next one